Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. Today's topic is free body diagram. The objective of this video is to show you how to draw correctly free body diagram to determine that force on an object. Free body diagram or FBD. Free body diagrams are used to show the relative magnitude and the direction of all forces acting upon an object in a given situation. The size of the arrow in a free body diagram reflects the magnitude of the force. The arrow shows the direction that the force is acting. Each force arrow in a diagram is labeled to indicate the exact type of force. It is generally customary to draw the force arrow from the center of the box outward in the direction that the force is acting. So in the last sentence, as you can see, each object basically is indicated by a box. Let's take a look what that means. A block of wood is sitting motionless on a table. What forces are acting on it? So remember all the forces we have learned. First, we draw the force from the center of the box. So from the center here, that's how we draw it. This is gravity. Another name is weight. Weight is the force of gravity pulling an object toward the center of Earth. So that's going downward. Another force is upward. This is called a normal force. This is the result from table pushing the box down. Up, I mean. Normal force is the force that any object exerts exerts when pushed on. So the table is pushing the box up. Because the box is at rest, that means it's in equilibrium. Forces has to cancel out. Fn and Fg have to be the same, so they must have the same size. Fn equals to Fg. Now let's just practice how to draw free body diagrams. Example one. An egg is free falling from a nest in a tree. Neglect air resistance. Draw a free body diagram showing the forces involved. So this is the egg. It's a box, free falling from the tree. If one it's anything is free falling, the only force acting on it is gravity. So from the center of the box, you draw a line going down, label it. That's FG. This is called a free body diagram. That's all the forces acting on the free falling egg. Next one. A flying squirrel is gliding from a tree to the ground at a constant velocity. Consider air resistance. A free body di diagram for this situation would look like what? If it's constant velocity, we know the squirrel has to have weight. And if it's constant velocity, that means there has to be a force going opposite of the weight. We call that air resistance because this is what they said, consider air resistance. Now these two forces cancel out. That's why the flying squirrel is moving at a constant velocity. That's it, two forces. Another example, a rightward force is applied to a book in order to move it across a desk. So a book apparently sits on a desk. Consider frictional force, neglect air resistance, construct a free body diagram. So here is the desk and here is the book. The box is the book. <clears throat> so there is a rightward applied force and there is a the friction has to be leftward, and there is downward gravity and upward normal force. So gravity is down, the desk is, is also pushing the book up, Fn, this two has to be the same size, because the book is not moving up and down. Next, you have applied a force to the right, that's F applied, so you'll have a leftward force friction. You assume the box is moving to the right and it's accelerating. So the friction is to the left, has a smaller size. But the question, it, does, it doesn't really say how the book is moving. So 
whichever way you draw it, which if they are the same size or FF is bigger than I've applied, that's going to be okay. Another example, a skydiver is descending with constant velocity. Consider air resistance, draw a free body diagram. Another example of constant velocity. Whenever you see constant velocity, that means all the forces has to cancel out. So skydiver, a box, always have a gravity. To overcome this gravity, you must have an upward force with the same magnitude. What do we call that force? Since it's a skydiver traveling through air, so that must be air resistance. This two should be the same. Next, a man drags a slide across loosely packed snow with a rightward acceleration. So sled has to be on the surface. So that's a packed surface, snow packed, and here is the sled. So again, there's gravity, there's normal force, and there's rightward force, then because it's loose laid packed snow, so there is also uh, friction. This is applied, this one is friction. Now, this in this case, applied force has to be bigger than friction because you have a rightward acceleration. So you are accelerating that way to the right, so net force has to be to the right. Next example, a football is moving upward toward its peak after having been booted by the pounder. Consider air resistance, draw a free body diagram. So here's a football, which way it's moving? It's kind of moving upward toward its peak, that's V. So as the football is in the air, there is a gravity, always gravity downward, because there is air resistance. Air resistance is opposite of your V, so air resistance is this way, F air. That is the free body diagram for this football. Next example, a car runs out of gas and is coasting down a hill. If it's run out of gas, there cannot be applied force. So going down a hill. So basically here is the hill, here is the car. What are the forces acting on it? Velocity is this way. So gravity is always downward. Normal force perpendicular to the surface. The other one is a friction force is opposite of your velocity. You'll probably say, hey, isn't there applied force? No, because the car is running out of the gas. You can't put it, your foot on the gas pedal. You can't apply a force. So this is it. Now let's uh, review how do we determine the net force. Remember net force is a vector sum of all forces. Sum, we know, add everything together. Vector means you have to consider the directions. For example, the net force, for example, A would be 400 newtons upward. <clears throat> How did I get 400? You use up is positive 1200 plus negative 800. That's how you have positive 400. Positive means upward. This one, you'll have positive 600 plus negative 800. You will have negative 200. Negative means downward. Up and down cancels in example C, so all you have left is 20 newtons to the left. That's a net force. Another example for determining a net, net force situation A. Up and down cancels, left or right cancels. Net force equals to zero. Situation B, up and down cancels. The one to the left of five newtons is the one you have left. That's five newtons left. Situation C, up and down cancels, net force equals to zero. Situation D, upward has more force than downward. So you have a net upward force of 50 newtons up. 